so we are going to record this so that we can uh, post it later and hopefully answer some other people's questions as they come. Um, I do want to mention really quick as we get started that we have um, a couple more events in our career fair preparation series coming up. Uh, this coming Friday, we have one that focuses on what recruiters want, where we will have three recruiters with us or recruiting professionals um, from uh, a couple of different companies, and they will be talking about pretty much whatever we want to ask them. So if it's a uh, how do they like to be communicated with? What do they look for in the perfect candidate? All sorts of different things. So uh, that will be in GR 3.302. Um, we encourage you to come. Uh, I have been sending out re registration links. We do have a free giveaway that we will be doing. Uh, it's not a T-shirt. It's uh, more focused on professional development and, and something you can use at the career fair. Uh, so if you pre-register for that, you'll be available or you'll be eligible uh, for that drawing. Um, and then next week on Friday, we will have our writing workshop. So that's the one where you can show up to. Uh, we'll have a, a little bit of a presentation in the beginning with a, a checklist of things that you should watch for when you're writing and all your documents. Uh, and then we'll basically have our hour and a half of time that we can devote to just working on whatever documents you brought with you. Um, so whether that be your resume or your LinkedIn account or anything like that. Uh, and we will also have pizza for that one. So that's from 12 to noon on the 28th. Uh, and then we have our actual bioengineering career fair on the 4th of November. Uh, so that's coming up here real fast. Uh, we already have eight companies signed up for it. We sent out another registration link for that for everyone. Um, so please do pre-register for that and it'll be a good time. We'll hopefully be a, a very beneficial for all of you. All right, I can see more people joining us now. Um, that is great. And I think we have two of our speakers with us. Um, I know one was running a bit late, which is OK. Um, but we will have Dr. Prasad with us once she is available. We have Dr. David Schmidtke, our Associate Department Head for Undergraduate Education, and Dr. Betsy Willis, who is our Director of Operations. Uh, and they are here to answer your questions. So um, Dr. Schmidtke, if you would like to come back on. And um, I don't know if you had anything you wanted to show, but if you could go over just basically what does the degree plan look like from our ABET point of view? So just generally speaking, kind of give us a walkthrough on that. Oh, did we lose Dr. Schmicky? Actually, I don't see him anymore. Oh, no. I think we may have temporarily lost Dr. Schmidtke. Um Let's see. Dr. Willis, are you here? Yes, I'm here for a couple minutes and I got to hop off and then I'll hop back on. Oh, OK. Um, well. I don't know what happened with Dr. Schmidtke. Uh, it seems like we lost him. Do you can you give us a brief overview of um, the degree plan? Not not necessarily going into any detail on any one of them, but kind of just talking about how they, they build on each other or anything. Yeah, so the structure of our degree plans have um, several components. Um, one is the Texas core curriculum, which everyone's probably familiar with. Those are our history classes that, you know, everyone throughout the university takes um, history, arts, philosophy, psychology, those kinds of courses. Then we have our math and science uh, courses, and those are um, often foundational courses that provide you with the tools and um, skills necessary to um, apply math and science um, in biomedical engineering, which, you know, as engineers, we're the ones who get to make cool stuff. So we make math and science useful for the rest of the world. But in order to do so, we have to understand the fundamentals. Um, then after the fundamentals, of course, you have the courses in the major. And these are all of the biomedical engineering courses that um, presumably you came to UTD to take. And this is where your degree plan gets really exciting and really interesting. Um, and then finally, um, we cap off the degree program with um, senior design. And that's where you put everything together um, to solve a real world problem and create a real world device and, and prototype. So that is kind of a brief overview. Um, as you probably know, we've made some changes to the degree plan over the past few years to provide you with the marketable skills that you need to go out into industry. We also wanted to broaden the scope of our degree plan to uh, make it better balanced between, say, like science concepts, mechanical engineering concepts, and electrical engineering 
um, all as they are applied to biomedical systems. So we do have, if you're talking to your peers from different, uh, who started in different years, uh, there may be a few slight differences in your degree program, but know that the department, we're always here to answer questions about, whoa, which chemistry class should I be taking? Or wait a minute, my friend took this, but my degree plan says this. We're always happy to field those questions as are your ECS advisors. So with that, I don't know if you wanna launch into uh, answering, you know, see who has questions and what we might be able to answer. I think we can go ahead and launch into questions. So we do have some that we received uh, ahead of time. Uh, so we can go ahead and start with that. And we, we did cluster them a little bit by degree plan. So I'm not sure for the first one that it, it's, it's as specific. Uh, but the question is, when is it too late to enroll in the fast track program? I'm a senior and I wanna pursue a graduate degree. So is it too late to enroll for fast track? So the fast track program is currently, the admissions process for that is currently being revamped. Uh, our next admission cycle is going to be for fall of 23. So my advice to seniors who are interested in pursuing graduate studies, go ahead and apply to our master's program or even our doctorate program. You do not have to have the GRE. You can go through our auto admit or quick admit programs. Um, we know that our students here at UT Dallas are outstanding already. And so we make your admissions process even easier and simpler. And if you have questions about that, you can certainly ask me or ask um, anyone on my team, Leah Matheson and Andy Rhodes also work with our graduate admissions. Awesome, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen because it's just a couple of names. I think we're probably more interesting to look at than that. So um, thank you for that. And I will say I will be taking questions. I'm watching the chat. So if you have questions along the way to anybody who's with us or if you wanna raise your hand, please feel free. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and keep proceeding with some of the questions we had received ahead of time and we'll, we'll just monitor it and see what we've got. So. Next question is um, based on our 2021 or 2020 2021 degree plan, uh, but again, I think it applies to everyone. How do you check the pre requirements that have changed? So if they've changed from semester to semester, how do they know what has changed? Galaxy or course book. So whenever you search up a course that you're thinking about taking for the next semester, the prerequisites are always listed in that course description. We have updated those course requirements as courses have changed. And so, for example, this year we launched Beeman 1300, which is, which is our new computing course for first year students. Previously, it was CS 1324. So any course that previously required CS 1324 will now read for the prerequisites, CS 1324 or Beeman 1300. So you should always be able to find your prerequisites um, in your course catalog, on Galaxy, or in, um, in Coursebook. So I'm gonna have to hop off for just a few moments. I think I see Dave Schmicky back. Hopefully yeah. I can punt yeah. to him for a few questions. And then I think Dr. Prasad <laughs> should be hopping on here in a minute, but I will be back shortly. Thank you. Uh, so, Dr. Schmidke, follow-up question to what we were just talking about with Dr. Willis. So, if there is a if there is a course that has a pre prerequisite, and the course itself has changed, the prerequisite itself has changed, but I'm on a previous degree plan. Does the prerequisite also change? Does that make sense the way I said that at all? <laughs> Not sure. I, you know, I think the the best um, advice is to look at the course in a current in the current undergraduate catalog and look to see what the prereqs are because some of the prereqs have changed with, for the courses and so i would go to the most current catalog and check on the course and see what's prereq if it's still not clear then contact the bme office whether that's uh, betsy or leah um, they can confirm it, but I, I think you should be able to find it from the undergraduate catalog for the current year. And how would a student go about, oh, I think you got muted or there's a, oh, I think there's actually a lag on my computer. Sorry, never mind. Uh, <laughs> so how does a student find if uh, their, their degree plan given the year that they're in. So you can go to the current one. How do they find one from the past? Um, I guess you can check with the office. I think, you know, online, you can probably type in and find it online, but I'm not sure other than checking with the office. 
you know, in your think... advisor, I, in, in, in your advisor, you know, in the College of Engineering, the advisor should know what degree plan you're on and what courses are required for that. OK, and I do so think there is a possible way, as you were saying, that you can type in your basically biomedical engineering um, 2019 and, and you can come up with the course catalog for that one. Um, OK. Yeah, well, they have course catalogs. Yeah, you can go back there. You know, I just was doing it pre earlier today to look at some of the math prereqs and, you know, you type in math 2314 and depending on if you have undergraduate catalog 2021 or 2015, uh, it may have changed. But, uh, you know, check with your advisor over in ECS. That's the best option. And then you could also check with the uh, BME department. Excellent. Okay. Um, another question we have, this one is from 2021 catalog, is in terms of the 2021 to 2022 Beeman degree plan, CS 1324 was a required course and a prerequisite to some courses in the junior year, but it was replaced with Beeman 1300 in the 2022 catalog. So if they started in 2021, would they need to take both courses or one or the other, or is it still CS 1324? Uh, it depends on what degree plan you're on, right? If you're on the original 2021 and that's the program plan you want to be on, then my understanding is you would still take CS 1324 and not have to take BME 1300. If you've switched, right? Because I think if you come in at 2021, you have the option to move into the new degree plan, the 2022. So if you're on the 2022 degree plan, then you would take BME and 1300 and then move forward with that. But you should not have to take both courses. Again, I would default to the ECS advising. Okay, and I see, yep, there's Dr. Prasad. Hello and, and welcome. Hello. Yeah. So one thing I did want to add on that question, which Dr. Schmidtke was answering, is that uh, CS may not be teaching 1324. Uh, and if that is the case, then of course you can take uh, BME and 1300 in, in lieu of that. So it's either it's an either an or option. You don't take both. So, so if I'm on the 2021 degree plan and I prefer to take 1300, is that an option? Sorry, my internet, yeah. So I hope you can hear me still, but yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, so if 1324 is not offered, then the only option is, is BME and 1300, right? So that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we don't teach, like bioengineering doesn't teach CS 1324. So we do not control what's being taught. And that's the point even Dr. Schmidke was making. But uh, you are eligible to take the course that is in your degree plan. Okay. Uh, I do see some questions coming in on our chat. We're going to go ahead and finish the questions that we received ahead of time first, and then we'll circle back around. So I'm not ignoring you. We'll, we'll get back to you. All right. So our next question is on the current degree plan. Uh, it says, I am currently behind a semester in math, which affects my plans to take physics and other courses, making current my current plan to only be nine credit hours, or my current semester to only be nine hours. What options... Um, what options do they have to bring them back up on track uh, and to bring them up to at least the 12 credit hours for the next semester? The core classes, the Texas Core Common Core classes would be an option, an obvious option for, and because those don't have the prerequisites, but I would strongly urge spending time to doing the math. And if it's going to take you uh, perhaps, uh, you know, getting that, because then work with your degree plan appropriately because the sequencing of the courses are going to pretty much matter. While, while we teach BME and many of the mandatory major required courses, fall, spring, and summer, the math is going to be the, you have to look at what is the prerequisite. So for spring, immediate spring, then the Texas Common Core are the ones that would be your obvious choice that would be available to get to the 12 SEH to carry the load for that semester. Dr. Schmidtke, is there anything else you want to add? No, I, you know, the only comment is try to get caught up in math as soon as possible. So that might mean that you have to take a math course during the summer so that you can get back on track. But as Dr. Prasad said, 
most of our required courses we offer both semesters, both in the fall and the spring and some of them also in the summer. So as soon as you get your math requirements, you should be able to jump in. And uh, speaking of core courses, um, do you recommend taking them earlier in their, the four years or later in the four years or just kind of sprinkling them in throughout whenever they fit? Or some combination thereof. <laughs> okay, so if I'm making the comment for that, I think it's important to use those to balance out your load because the, the junior sequence is intense, right? Because they're going to be multiple lab expectations. The BME and junior sequence, the 3000 level courses are pretty intense. So there is a uh, each has a lab component, um, a lab course in addition to the lecture course, right? So if you look at 3320, then uh, and and so on, right? And there's a junior design. So if you do need things to and it's uh, to kind of break up that uh, degree plan for that semester, um, I think this you could sprinkle them in. Sometimes you won't have a choice, primarily as the previous question alluded to. If you don't have the math done in time, then it's going to impact what you can take or cannot take. So uh, in that, the choice gets taken away from you. There are some elective courses that uh, can be done within the department, which I would want you to kind of look at in terms of options and ask the department. Uh, sometimes you might not hear them from your advisors, please feel free to reach out to the department. You can send Dr. Schmidtke an email. Um, you can uh, also send Dr. Porter an email to better understand what are the options. It doesn't, and if you have senior standing, right, that is 90 SEHs, you don't need to be a senior in our program, a degree program, but you have senior standing, which is 90 SEHs in your degree plan that you've taken, then you are eligible to take in elective some graduate level courses, right? So you can take graduate courses. You can try out a grad course as an elective in, the, in your degree plan. So these are options that are available for you. But going back to the important question is of sprinkling the choice of the Texas Common Core, I would say, yeah, use those as your balancing courses. Some of the rhetoric and the writing courses, engineering ethics is a lot of repetitive work, right? Uh, and um, it can get monotonous, but it's an expectation because you do need to have ethics done. Um, and it's also an AVET expectation. So yeah. Anything else, Dr. Schmidtke, you want to add? <laughs> no, I think those are good suggestions. Okay. Um, from the same person, can they take 24, math 2420 and engineering 2300 currently if they've already taken their math 2415? So math 2420 is differential equations and, and ENGR 2300 is linear algebra. So my point, my guidance to any student is look at the catalog. Does the catalog require each of them to be prerequisites, right? And the way I looked at the catalog this morning is they were not. So it is that's the conversation you need to have with your advisor. If they are not prerequisites or um, co-requisites, then you have a lot of freedom. If they're co-requisites, then yeah, you have to take them. You can take them together. But if one is a prerequisite for the other, then you, you have to take it in the sequence or in which the prerequisite was identified. Now, the challenge for you is one is a differential equations. And you will need these differential equations if you have to do 3315, which is thermodynamics, BME and 3315. So if the more familiar you are with the math and more time you have practiced your math, that's helpful. Linear algebra does more Taylor series, geometric series, and so on, right? So can you take them together? They cover different types of math. Um, then it then it is very student specific. But in terms of whether or not the catalog expects you to do it in a particular way, that is what the cat that is the basic guidance that we that I would ask you to look at. Look at the catalog closely and whether one is required for the other. That is what you would be discussing with your advisor. I saw Dr. Willis join. Uh, Dr. Willis, you want to yeah. comment on this? So if you look at the prereqs for ENGR 2300, the prereq is either 2414 or 2419. So if you're actually in 2420, you've already had 2419. So you could actually, you should be able to take ENGR 2300. But again, check with your ECS advisor. 
Okay, I think Dr. Willis actually had to step off for a few minutes, so she's in and out. <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, next question, are there any resources combining the degree plan for pre-med and BMIN? So no, no, these are two separate programs. So you do have to work with your he health studies advisor for your, uh, what is expected from a pre-med expectation and with the ADU, which is the uh, ECS advising for your degree plan for BMEN. Yes, it would be nice. Uh, and I hope that as, as the advisors all talk, that may be a direction, but there is currently nothing that is available. So hence you, the student, have to be very intentional. And I hope these kinds of um, uh, information sessions are empowering and enabling to you so that you're asking the right questions of your advisor so that you are uh, able, because it is a very heavy load that you're taking on to be both a pre-med and then do the BMEN. So I, again, uh, it's it's important that you're doing this, um, you're paying close attention to your degree plan and what you're achieving semester by semester. Dr. Schmidtke. Yeah, at this time there isn't. This is uh, an issue that the department is considering and potentially in the future, but at this time there isn't. And so I would agree with Dr. Prasad, check with your advisors. Okay. I have one more question before we start going to um, to our, our, our comments here and, and raise, answering the hands. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to phrase this one correctly, so I'm going to try. Uh, there seems to be confusion about chemistry on the 2022-23 plan. Um, how on some plans it looks like it was listed as 13-12 is required, and others it looks like it was supposed to be organic chemistry. Um, which What is the correct one that they should be following? So this is related to what degree plan you're on. So the old degree plan, you took freshman chemistry and then a hybrid organic chemistry uh, course, I believe. Under the new degree plan, you take first semester chemistry, freshman chemistry, first semester with the lab, and then second semester, you take the second semester of freshman chemistry without the lab, and then you also have to take an organic chemistry uh, course. So it depends which degree plan, if you're on the old degree plan or the new degree plan. And I think this question was specific to the new degree plan. So we'll have to check that because it sounds like they think that it was wrong where it's posted. So we'll go check that. Yeah, um, so they have to do two so semesters of general chemistry in terms in the new degree plan, which is 13, 11, 12 before they can take OK. Right, and OCHEM is 1324, which is Introduction for Organic Chemistry for Engineers. OK, well, that goes through the, the pre-questions that we had. We can flip over here to our side and see, see Tanya has the first one. Uh, will the programming classes like C++ and Java still substitute for BME 1300? So can they substitute uh, any of the programming classes for BME 1300 instead? Uh, I guess it would depend on what the course number is, and that's something that you'd have to submit. Talk to your advisor, and then it would be submitted to the department, and then the department would then make um, a decision whether it would be an appropriate substitution. But without the course number, it's really hard to give a blanket answer right now. And also to look at the topics, right? So because it, the entire thing with the syllabus, because 1300 has a very heavy MATLAB component, which you would need for the further on classes in BMEN. So if you have an opportunity, it, it, you know, you're probably going to be better prepared foundationally taking BMEN 1300 uh, because it you use the content throughout your rest of your BMEN curriculum. However, we understand you've taken programming before, so it matters that you have to submit the thing. It is it, And this... Uh, venue is not the great place to answer that question. So it has to start from your advisor in terms of putting those things. It comes to the department, goes to the undergraduate committee, they evaluate it and they make recommendation and we send it back to your advisor. So that's the process. Okay, see Tanya, looks like she might be typing. Um...
the little blinking dots. <laughs> but we can, can come back if there is a response there. Uh, I saw that Andrew had his hand raised for a while. Uh, Andrew, are you still wanting to, to unmic or would you rather we read it from the chat? Uh, I guess I could read it out to you again. Um, I'm currently uh, enrolled in math 13, 14, and 13, 16 concurrently, and my degree plan is supposed to start in math 24. Let me hold, uh, look at the flowchart I have pulled up here. Look at me, I'm so prepared. Uh, but I'm supposed to be in either math 24, 17 or math 24, 13. That's two semesters. Like, if I were to take all the prerequisites of the courses to get to that point where I'm supposed to be right now, that is two whole semesters. And that would probably put me fairly far behind when it comes to things like be enrolling in physics next, sem next semester and enrolling in and enrolling in like the engineering 2300. So what are your recommendations on that? Um, I, you know, again, talk to your ES ECS advisor. There's, you know, you'd have to look to see are there are courses that you can take that do not have the math requirements because math calculus, you know, the first semester calculus are so fundamental to a lot of the other subsequent courses. If you're not calc ready or not in calculus, you just won't be able to do well in these other courses, you know, because and that's the reason why they have the prerequisites. So um, I, I would work with your advisor to find those courses that you could take that would not require the, the calculus. I don't know if Dr. I Prasad see. wanted to comment. The uh, other thought you might want to think about is trying to do some of this math in Colin or, um, you know, or the community colleges, the pre-math before you come back. Uh, I mean, to attempt this, right? Because, um, the, uh, but you, you have to plan that carefully uh, because equivalencies but with Colin College that's mm -hmm. the Colin Community College that is something that is uh, we've seen a number of students take that route uh, but uh, you you are in a diff difficult situation primarily because that level of readiness and the math readiness is needed for all the further on classes which Dr. Schmidtke has alluded to but that strategy may work because then uh, of the, using the community college so between spring and uh, summer if you can make up that deficit right because we do offer um, you know a, a number of our 3000 sequence is offered even in summer now depending on the number of people who require maybe statics 2320 there is the opportunity for us to figure out a summer offering. So these are things that, you know, when people become ready for this, uh, but the math would be needed to get into that. Right. Yeah, I so have been looking into uh, taking the next math course. I believe it's 20, 2312. I believe that comes after 1316 uh, at Colin over the over the winter, but that will still put me one semester behind. Uh, thankfully, I do get most of my core classes out of the way via AP credits. So is it maybe do you think it would be possible to spread out some of the courses that are supposed to be taken, say, sophomore or uh, spring of freshman year or beginning of sophomore and like spread them out farther out through the back end? Or is, is there too many prerequisites and that wouldn't that not be possible? It kind of depends. So like in the BME courses, they're kind of sequential. And so it's really hard right. to go out of the sequence. You know, the one thing if you haven't already, right, normally in the sophomore year, you're going to take your biology courses 2311 and then the lab 2111 and then 2281. So I don't believe those have uh, prereqs for math. And so if you can take the biology courses, um that you don't you could take them potentially your freshman year i believe instead of you know that so that that would be my recommendation but again you know for specific courses talk with your ecs advisor all righty thank you very much yeah dr schmidtke's advice is spot on look at biology courses those may be a way but again ecs advising is the one that gets you into courses and and they are our professional advisors <laughs> And as, as Dr. Prasad said, and I don't know, you know, we as a at the end of the graduate degree, you have, I think, four prescribed electives, so BME electives. And so if any of those elective courses potentially, you know, you could take, you could look into it. But, you you know, what the rec prereqs or co-recs for that, you'd have to check ahead of time. 
Uh, do you see some questions if there are plans to hire more advisors? That's one that we can't really comment on because we're at the department level as opposed to the school level. Um, yes, I mean, they are certainly trying to hire more advisors, but that's not something we can talk about too much to. At least I don't think we can, Dr. Prasad. Is there any? <laughs> yes, uh, the only comment I'll make on that topic is that the our dean is very well aware about, uh, you know, the, the how much work, uh, I mean, the amount of load that our advisors have and also the customer service that you, the students, are getting. So she's really working. So this is the year that she's trying to make those, push the needle towards you as students, can see the benefit of uh, the investment of resources. Um, so that it, 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 right now as a student, you probably are not going to see that, but I can tell you that this is what we talk about every two weeks that we meet for this topic. So I can tell you this is like a real, uh, yes, drinking from the fire hose. We understand it, which is why as a department, we've started this um, this particular activity where we are meeting today because we're trying to help. Because, um, you know, as faculty of the department, Department. We understand the content in the courses and we're trying to give some guidance. However, we can't enroll you into classes. We can't recommend you to take classes, but hope actions help you to be more informed and ask you to ask those questions when you have your advising time with your advisor. Back to you, Dr. Porter. Thank you. And there was a question about the flowcharts earlier. I did find the, the links um, for up. 2017 all the way up to the current ones, um, which I have posted in our chat there. So uh, if you have any questions about your current, your your flow chart, you can check them out there. All right, we had a, another question. Um, which math do we need to be on for the sophomore year to be on track? And this is for fall 2022 freshmen. So what math so should they no be taking in their sophomore year in order to be on track? So normally during your freshman year, you'll take 20, you know, it depends on if you're in the two sequence or three semester sequence. So, you know, normally you take 2417, 2419, and then 2420. Um, so, so normally you're in 2420 with the three semester, uh, or that's the two semester sequence. Is that right, Shalini? Yes, it's a two semester sequence, correct? If you do 24, 17, 24, 19, then by the third semester, third long semester, you're in uh, primarily differential equations, which is 24, 20. Uh, but if you're doing the three semester sequence, which is 24, 13, then you have 24, 14, uh, which is integral calculus or calc two, then you have calculus of several variables, which is 24, 15, which you will have to take it over the summer. 24-15 is taught in the summer, but so you would have to take it the summer to continue to remain on track for you to for sophomore year to be able to then do your DFEQ, differential equations, math 24-20. Otherwise, you won't be able to do that. Excellent. Amrata, does that uh, help? Or does that answer your question? And differential equations are very important because when you see further down, we have in our junior year 3315. So the thermodynamics requires you to understand differential equations, right? So you're doing it the previous year and you're applying it. Even for statics, you're going to be using some of that. That's the reason why it's structured in that manner. I understand it is intense. And so that's why one semester of poor math can really set you behind. So it's very important proactive and we're figuring out how to address that piece. Well, thank you. OK, so the next question, um, the class I needed in my degree plan, this is for 2019, is no longer offered. An alternative is offered, but the prereqs for it are not in the degree plan. Can you take the class that she needs without the prereqs that weren't in the degree plan so that they don't go over hours? This is for the 2019 degree plan. I, I think I, I said that right, Neha. What course is it? She is typing. Physiology. OK, so physiology in the past, there was a one semester lecture and then there was a lab course. And now the lecture has been split up into two different um, lecture courses. 
So this would be, again, I would contact the ECES advising, but then they will submit and contact the department and offer a you know substitution or alternative plan. And this is something we expect as a request in the department, but you know, uh, you will have, you you are the initiator, the student, you are the initiator of the process. Um, and once it department, it would be pretty quick. Again, as I said, the process is our undergraduate committee looks at it, Dr. Schmidtke and his colleagues, they look at it. So for all of you on the call, Dr. Schmidtke is our associate department head for undergraduate studies. So, uh, you know, he is the person, if you're wondering if we are just a bunch of people, he is the person that, you know, you can send emails to. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and, but he and, can't give you advice, technical, like he can't get you into classes, but he can give you broader advice. Right, and, and we've had other students with this physiology, with the change in the physiology sequence. We've had other students have similar issues and we've been able to resolve that. And so, but again, the first step is work with your CS advisor. They will then contact us about a, an alternative substitution and then we can go from there. And I apologize, I hope we're not sounding like we're just pushing everything through ECS advising. Unfortunately, that's the way the process works, is you have to start through ECS advising. All right, so you need all... No, okay. Thank you for that. Um... All right, and I apologize that this has already been addressed. I've been kind of split, splitting my attention, but can math uh, 2418 substitute engineering 2300? So engineers want engineering math to be taken. So this is something that um, they generally don't allow. That substitution is what I have seen. Uh, but again, you know, this is we start with the advisors. You see the content because that's not a department run course. It's primarily content driven. And so if again, you do the same thing, right? Course substitution, you start with the descriptor of the what the, uh, you know, the topics are that are being covered and you map it. But engineering teaches that 2300 with the intent that the way they teach it um, uh, is going to be more helpful for an engineering student. Uh, however, we have seen that students have requested it, but this is the way you would approach it. But we would not be dispositioning it in the department because this is not a department managed course. So it just goes more central. I believe the next question then is from uh, Lucy. Can you elaborate on re the revamping of the fast track program? Uh, somebody was hoping to apply in spring and they'd like to plan ahead. So the springs, uh, uh, for spring, fast track has been paused. And I just want you to understand it has been paused. They're not stopping it. So it will be available again the next academic year. Now, what is going to happen is that there are two aspects to this. Uh, the, the applicant aspect right now is pretty confusing. They ask for a lot of courses and GPA in those courses is most of the time you may be in the course when you apply that semester and your grades won't post. So it's very tough to make decisions, right? Because if it's based on the posted GPA. So there is uh, an entire process where we are trying to understand uh, you know, what courses would be the benchmark courses that we'll be using in your undergraduate degree plan to allow you to get into the fast track. And we're trying to increase the turnaround time from the time the student apply, I mean, rather decrease the turnaround time from the time you apply to when you get you admitted into the fast track program. So this is a thing that all departments across the Johnson School are working on. And in our department, our graduate and undergraduate committees are going to be discussing. Now, which courses are required is the one that's being determined by our undergraduate committee. Um, and that would be updated in the spring semester. So you'll see that which comes out, but you can't apply for the spring semester. Now, along the thing on fast track, right? So fast track allows you to essentially use those graduate classes that you have in your uh, degree plan and apply it to your graduate degree plan as well. So basically the concept of using it twice, right? So that's what the fast track does. 
However, my suggestion also, if you want to see how a graduate class looks like, if you have 90 SEHs and you are looking at the electives in our curriculum, you can look at a direct graduate course to get a feel of how a graduate course looks like. You don't have to be in the fast track program for you to do that. The second thing is because you are a UTD uh, undergraduate student and you're going to get a BME undergraduate degree, yet allows you this auto admit process. You don't need a GRE to get into our program. So you can be auto admitted of a fast track evaluation of your application. But this is but it will not give you the benefit of taking these courses in your undergraduate plan and having it count towards your graduate plan. That is the major benefit that a, a fast track uh, process or fast track application would give you. So if you're planning for it, right? So uh, I would say uh, we should expect the the new um, directions to be posted. If not the end of this calendar year, it would be early spring. At which point in spring, we are hoping to have another information session where we can actually go over. Uh, you know, the specific specific questions with respect to what's there for the BME and fast track program. But in terms of that, uh, this hopefully gives you an overview of how it's going to get restructured. And we are going to do the graduate course advising or suggestions within our department that allows you then to use your professional advisor on the undergraduate side to enroll you into those classes. Because again, we cannot enroll you into your classes if you're an undergraduate student within the department. Hopefully that helps you. It is a little long-winded, but hopefully it gives you an overview. Uh, Dr. Schmitke, is there anything you want to add on fast track at this point? No. I wanted to ask for a quick clarification. So you said if I have if I have 90 hours already, then I can audit a class or I can take the graduate class. You can take the graduate class as an elective because 90 hours gives you senior status in the uh, by credit hours, right? It might not give you senior status in our degree plan in the BMA degree, because you could be a transfer student or you move from a different program into this. So you might not have it, like you could be still a junior in terms of the classes you're taking. But, you know, if you have 90 SH, because you can start taking those electives. We have a number of electives in our degree plan, right? So that could be a graduate class and you don't fast track to take that graduate class as an elective for yourself. I currently have a number of students who are not fast track, who are taking a gra the graduate class I'm teaching this fall. So that's what I meant. And then that counts uh, part of the undergraduate GPA. Um, it's on yes. the undergraduate grading scale, or is it on the, gra the graduate grading scale? It will be or? on the graduate grade. They'll be treated as a graduate student. So they okay. will be on a graduate grading scale. It will be, a, a and but that uh, whatever they score, or what the student's course would be in their degree plan, right? Because it is an elective. They're using it to satisfy one of the electives on the undergraduate degree plan. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. So then is. if I go ahead and I go into the graduate degree pro program at UTD for bioengineering, it will not count towards that those credit hours. So, unless you were fast track. That's the only way it would have counted. But because you're not fast track, it won't count. Yes. Okay. Um, and then we have a good question. Will the tuition for the graduate classes be charged as an undergraduate rate if you're taking them as an undergraduate? I actually do not know the answer to that question, you know, because I don't know that piece, but I think it's something we can take and talk to board that we can have an answer for them. I don't know the answer. Okay. Sounds like a registrar question. Yeah. <laughs> Bursar, sorry, Bursar. Yes. Um, so, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another question, since registration for classes for next semester is next week, and I hope to take Math 2312 at Colin during the winter, should I put down Math 2417, 2413 as the one they want to take, or should they put the Math 2312 as the, the one they want to take in case they don't end up getting the course at Colin? So did they predict for success or did they predict for failure? Um, either way, I, I, I would like to predict for success. However, I don't know if I, one, I don't know if I'll be am I allowed to sign up for courses that I don't have the prereqs for, prereqs for currently, or I'm not currently enrolled in the prereqs for. Like, am I allowed to do that? There would be a hold. They wouldn't 
get you in till they know what the grade posts right so they would I get see. you in and then that, so that's the thing right so there would be always a hold against you that's why you'll have to have a dial like um you close the loop with your advisor and i do understand mm -hmm. when you write to your advisor you get this auto email that says that they'll get to you uh, but mm -hmm. yes that's what happens because you'll end up with that hold because you are okay. you're not making the recs to be in the class so that's what will happen right and uh, I'm supposed to be meeting with my ECS, uh, uh, well, my ECS class ad advisor, uh, Miss Miss Mann, tomorrow morning. Since uh, and I just I thought this would be a good way to prepare for it. So, I'll get any advice I could get. Thank you. Yeah, so, we in the department don't have the override power. I saw that message. Unfortunately, you know that override only exists with the professional advisors. <laughs> So the key takeaway from that would be there would be a hold placed on my uh, registration for that class until the grade was posted. Uh, so should I plan to uh, for both cases? So like if I do get manage to get in, uh, manage yeah, to get in and pass. It's smarter and to plan do, do for not. both. I would think right, so. Yes. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I think that catches us up with the questions that I saw in the chat. Please let me know if I missed anything or raise your hand if you want to go ahead and ask. Um, we still have a couple minutes left. So are there any remaining questions that I did miss or suddenly sparked? Oh, there we go. So would it be beneficial to take BMEN 3350, 3150 as guided electives? Or is that content still covered in the newer degree plans somewhere? And would it be redundant then? Can you what degree that plan was that on, Lucy? I think this is the um, the the lab, right? Thirty one fifty lab that we took away um, from the previous one. The, from components. Yes, in the components. Lab. Yeah, I think you can take that as an elective. 3350, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, yes, you could take that as an elective, yes. Mm -hmm. You'll have to check to see if it's being offered. I think she has a question to follow. Oh, up. you can go ahead and ask if you want, Lucy. It might make it easier. <laughs> uh, um, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. It is offered still i believe for people who are like catching up but i was wondering if it was removed completely or if it was sort of like reformatted into a new class like if i take it as an elective will i just be doubling up on something that i already have to take no it it so we had in the previous degree plan, we had a really large number of uh, what I would say device classes, more electrical engineering based. And so we wanted to cut back on that to some extent and give more flexibility that now you have, I think, four prescribed electives. And so, no, you wouldn't be doubling up on any of the material from that course in the current degree plan. Okay. Is that, Shalini, do you have any comments? So in the choice, one thing I'll add is, uh, you know, if you are really like that instrumentation area and the device area, then yes, using this as an elective because we are teaching that, right? It's, it's, it's fair game. But if you want to see perhaps the biomechanics things or the biomaterials flavor of things, and then the opportunity of using your electives for taking a graduate class, right? So there is biomaterials and medical devices that Professor Rodriguez teaches at the graduate level. There's Dr. Schmidtke's self-assembly class that he teaches. Uh, all of those give you a wider flavor of what biomedical engineering is. And maybe you might find that might, uh, you know, pique your interest in perhaps following through and 
maybe going to grad school or finding careers perhaps in those areas where you could be in the orthopedic material space. So this gives that opportunity, right? Um, but of course, if you like instrumentation, that is a it's set up as a very like an undergraduate focused class, right? Because that's what it was is a required course. Now it's become an elective, but and it'll build up on your uh, circuits background that you would you have in that 3200 class and it'll go from there. So the choice is yours. Any other questions? Yes, so how do we know whether we are on the three or two semester track or the, I'm um, guessing this is for math, are most students by default on the two semester track? So when you started at UTD, prior to that, you might have taken the Alex test. So the Alex test is the determining factor on whether you place into the three semester math or the two semester math. I believe you have to score an 85 or an above for in the Alex test for you to be on the two semester math. Um, and so, um, and, and there is a smaller range, right? It's not just below that, it's I think it's 82 or to 85 or something like that. And again, those numbers, please don't quote me on that, but that is the determining factor on which, uh, which gateway, which pathway you end up following. Um, and you should know it because if you are in that 24, 13, uh, if that's what you're taking right now, then that is the three six, six semester sequence. But if you're in 24, 17 math, then you are in the two semester sequence, right? So that's what's going to help you understand that aspect and hope that helps. Uh, any other questions? Uh, looks like a no, so I think we can go ahead and wrap it up. We're actually pretty close on time, so it was just about perfect. Um, so thank you, Dr. Schmidtke and Dr. Prasad and Dr. Willis for joining us and answering all the questions. Um, thank you everyone for attending. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, we appreciate your feedback either way, so let us know if it was good or bad, and we'll, we'll see what we can do in the future semesters. <laughs> um, so thank you, everyone. Have a good yeah. remainder of your week. Thank you. Bye.